Executive meeting to order. This is the Tree Advisory Commission meeting scheduled uh, for today, Thursday, May 3rd, 2018. Uh, 4 o'clock p.m. Time to start. First, we'll have welcome to everyone here, and let's have introductions. Uh, Steve, we can start with you, Don. I'm here. Steve Kaler, City Engineer. Derek Nelson, uh, Energy Services Representative, Public Utilities. Tom Romaine, Commission Member. Wayne Shopper, Commission Member. Arlen Body, Commission Member. Lisa Langer, Commission Member. Uh, Tom Schmitz with the Park and Recreation Department. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we have uh, the agenda in front of us. Uh, any um, amendments or do we have a motion to approve today's agenda? I would move for approval of the minutes. I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Motion passed. Uh, item number three, amend or approve the March 17th, 2018 minutes. Our last meeting minutes uh, approximately two months ago. Any comments or move to amendments or move to approve the minutes? So moved. I'll second. Very good. Okay, it's been motioned and uh, uh, seconded to uh, approve the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, passed. Old business. We're starting off with the City Tree Reimbursement Program's Budget 2018. Mr. Kaler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You have a, a, a spreadsheet in your packet and also on your screen. Uh, as can be expected, the uh, Tree reimburse, Reimbursement Program has not seen any activity yet this year, but I'm certain that will pick up now that three feet of snow has melted off. So moving into the budget on the about halfway down or three quarters of the way down on that spreadsheet <coughs> is your the 2018 budget of six thousand dollars you've expended almost twelve hundred dollars so you still have a balance of forty eight hundred dollars on that and right below that is shown a 2017 carryover of thirteen hundred and thirty dollars so when you add that to the forty eight hundred you've got a balance of sixty one thirty available at this point in time if there's no questions on that, one comment for the for the commissioners. The state of Minnesota followed up on their landscape project from last year's mill and overlay. They did that work this Monday and Tuesday. I think they planted 62 trees along Broadway from 7th North to approximately 20th South. You may have noticed their the new trees and the work that was being done. So I think they, they look pretty healthy species they got them done early they'll be watering and maintaining them for two years who, who does the watering and maintaining the contractor does for the first two years and after that it's the homeowner's responsibility or the property owners okay very good yep. anything further let's move on to item b under old business the uh, puc tree and uh, programs and budget 2018 uh, mr nelson uh, we haven't had any action. No one's submitted um, reimbursements yet. We've had one application uh, to, for pre-approval, and that was for six aspen trees. Um, so uh, the beginning uh, for reimbursements started May 1st, I believe. So we'll be seeing action coming up real shortly, I'm, I'm assuming. We've had a handful, maybe a half dozen phone calls within the last three days. So it will be picking up by next meeting, no Excellent. doubt. Okay, very good. Item C, Buckthorn Removal Volunteer Program Update. Uh, I don't see Ms. Van Curie here, so I think we'll move on. Uh, garlic mustard. Here, the next. Is. here we have it. <laughs> this morning oh. I dug up to Adams Park before the deluge, and uh, it kind of went through a frost or two. But the thing that scares me is it's form and flower. So mm. is, that, Can I? Is, is that what garlic mustard's reaction is going to be to this? Weird spring head, is it going to not get as fall and just produce flowers? Um, so here's a program for New Orleans. <coughs> well, I hope you're out looking for it now because this is the only time you got. Mm -hmm. hey, if you try to kill it after May, you're not really killing it because it dies by itself by <laughs> then. And it goes to see. So, my name is Joe Gartner. I'm kind of helping with 
trying to get rid of garlic mustard. I guess that's <laughs> impossible, but at least make people aware of it. And so this is a little poster I put together that I want to put out. Uh, kind of some late times, but I'm kind of experiencing that it might be later. And last year it went to seed about the middle of June. So I think these dates are still good if it doesn't do anything crazy. Um, the long range, though, is on the other side. <coughs> I'm just going to read it because it kind of summarizes some things that I'm concerned about. But one thing I'm concerned about is, well, it'll come up in the in the paragraph. Uh, the forested areas of New Ulm are being invaded by earthworms, moles, garlic mustard, dame's rocket, honeysuckle, and buckthorn. More invasive species are on the way. The emerald ash borer is a good example, but there's more. There's a, a bunch in Fillmore County that aren't here, but they're heading, heading this way. I believe the deer population is contributing to erosion of our hillsides, the decline of native plants because they're eating them, and the spread of invasive seeds. Second paragraph, I feel that this is a very serious problem that is not being adequately addressed. And I'm, I'm not just saying New Home, it's the whole state. It, it is way beyond my ability to even get a handle on the garlic mustard. In the 15 years since I started visiting New Alm, garlic mustard has established itself as the dominant understory species in hundreds of acres and many properties. The city of New Alm and, of course, others uh, need to establish an invasive species program for homeowners in city, the city parks. Education and planning needs to occur. Uh, environmental sales tax and lottery money might be possible sources of funding. I do not have the energy nor the time to continue with garlic mustard. I will maintain the garlicmustardman.com website and I, I'll continue through May. Please accept my resignation as a volunteer as of June 1st, 2018. Um, yeah, so. Any questions? Is there someone following you or not at this time? Uh, well, I think there should be a paid person that yeah. coordinates this kind of stuff. And I'm not asking for any money or ever expecting any, but hmm. it starts at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and the legislature and the governor actually putting some kind of program together. And uh, from what I've seen, it's weak very weak for urban areas. You know, the Department of Ag is going to specialize in agriculture. And there's, you go to their website and you click on urban invasive weed management, nothing there, nothing at all. And some of the things that they, they recommend you do is not what any other state does. Like every state except Minnesota does say, says do not compost. Well, that's one of the methods for disposal in Minnesota. Every other state allows people to put small amounts in a bag and label it and put it in the solid waste or incinerator stream, but Minnesota does not. They also say you can cut, cut it and leave it lie, that it's best to do that rather than to remove it because you'll spread seeds. And there's a little, little truth to that. But if you don't remove those that have seed-bearing stalks, then you're not doing anything. It's a biennial, it'll, it'll just sprout again. So, and they, they also recommend mowing. Well, mowing is not good. It tends to spread more than do anything. But there are some good ways to manage it, and you know that's what I'd like to work at on my website. And I've contacted uh, our two representatives, and they seem very interested in in knowing more about it. It's only one invasive. I'm concerned that if this is how we're handling one invasive, what about all the rest? <laughs> but well, anyway, thank you. You're, you're probably the only person working on it in the state? Or? Uh, there's other people okay. and, you know, there's 
different groups doing a little okay. bit, but it's okay. a little bit it's not going to make much difference. No. Yeah, it's difficult, I can see. And it's hard for the average landowner or homeowner, I don't want to say to care, but to be aware of it. And if they aren't aware of it, then they don't really realize what's going on. Here's, here's what goes on if, you, if nothing is done. And, uh, here's, <laughs> I could go to a whole bunch of other places in the New Ulm area. It wouldn't have to just be the park out there. But uh, that's the alternative, you know, nothing mm. or all. <laughs> it's not pretty. And deer won't eat it. Nope. There, there is a, that one picture you got on this small plant here shows the biological control that they're trying to get permission to release. <coughs> so for about 20 years they've been testing it. They have about two to four years yet before it can be released if it's approved. It's that would be the great, the best thing, but it wouldn't end it. Because if you get rid of the garlic mustard, you still have all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. so, all right, well, thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure. Okay, item E under Old Business Minnesota Green Corps. Mr. Ramirez and uh, Schnobick and Schmidt. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, before we leave, the uh, garlic mustard topic, uh, given the fact that, that Mr. Gartner is no longer to be able to volunteer in this on June 1st, 2008, I would uh, like to propose a motion that uh, with regret we accept or we uh, accept that Joe is going to have to resign as the primary garlic mustard volunteer, but we should also thank him for his past efforts in publicizing and, and <coughs> trying to mm -hmm. deal with this garlic mustard program with, with uh, very, we're very grateful for your past work, Joel. Yes. I'd like to second that, Joel. You've re really uh, raised awareness and all the time you've uh, put in at the home shows to educate people. I think you did, you did reach a lot of people and you continue to reach a lot of people, so thank you. Okay, and let's address the motion. All in favor? Okay, I'll restate the motion. Uh, you restate the motion as, as presented. Well, then we Please. regretfully accept his mm -hmm. resignation and uh, tender our deepest thanks and gratitude for publicizing the issues of garlic mustard and other invasive species in your efforts to try and eradicate that. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Yes, thank you. I've learned a lot, personally learned a lot, too, in the last couple of years, just hearing you and et cetera, but that stuff won't go away overnight. Okay, let's continue on. Okay. Um, With Mr. Amers. Shane. Well, Commissioner, uh, Shane Amers, uh, Minnesota Green Corps member in the urban forestry track. Um, so beginning with the, uh, in the, beginning with the um, inventory section here. Um, so as, I was, as I've said in the last two meetings, I've kind of switched over to a survey, so there's not much to update on the inventory at this point. However, um, I uh, would like to bring to your attention, I've been able to kind of make a map of what's been done so far. There is a copy in the packet, but I also have on the screen here maybe a uh, a better representation of this. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen here is you know, a uh, Google Maps map of New Ulm. And so every single one of these circles that you see on here is one of the trees that's been inventoried by myself or my volunteers in the last um, year and a half that I've been here. Uh, and so what you're seeing is uh, the blue circles are all just um, well, the first up, the red circles are trees, or are ash trees. And the blue trees are just all the other trees. And so, um, it's uh, quite something to look at, kind of on the screen like this. You can see uh, quite a bit of the city had been done so far. Um, and ash trees definitely make up uh, quite a percentage of that. It's kind of scattered throughout the city. Some places there's um, higher clusters of them than 
than other places, but um, and so with this, I can just kind of show you the difference, some differences here between you know this and without. So the red ones, Shane, are the ash. What's that? The red dots are the sh ash. Yep, okay. correct. Um, so this is what's been done so far. See the owned land and in boulevards. And um, and so from here, you know, the last few months I have, um, I can kind of show you what I hope to accomplish. So up on the screen, you can see that there's highlighted areas. The areas highlighted in yellow are what um, what I would like to accomplish during the summer. I think it's definitely achievable. And from there, I think I can move out to kind of this orangish section out there. Um, and so let's see what let's see what can be accomplished. Um, I'm gearing up now to get the volunteers back on board. I'm coming up with a plan for a, uh, a refresher session um, and uh, do more volunteer outreach. Mm. Um, okay. So with that, uh, so an update on the survey. Um, I'm done with the the first part, the pre-sample, and so now um, I'm finishing up planning the uh, the second part. Then I go out and actually uh, do the data collection that I have been in inventory. So species I, uh, identification. Um, measurements, diameter, crown, width, and um, the two sets of uh, condition assessments. Um, and so that should be starting fairly soon. Um, so um, that's kind of what I have for, for uh, the inventory portion of that. Um, I think in the, you know, in the future, all of this inventory uh, information should be available on the, uh, the CDHGIS website. Um, so kind of color coded telling you what trees are where, what species they are. And so that's, that's definitely a, uh, something that will be happening in the future. Um, so the next section. Um, tree plantings. Um, I'll just briefly say that we, you know, I've been getting some of the, about two thirds of the trees that we're expecting um, have been obtained and now they're in the nursery. So the gravel bed by the uh, park and rec maintenance shop is now being stocked. Kind of nice to see. Um, and so I'll be getting the rest of the order shortly. And um, and so again, those trees will be sitting in the gravel bed for you know, the duration of the summer. So the, the root systems are going to develop, expand, and then come September or so, they'll be planted out there uh, along the bike trail. Um, so during the summer, I'm gonna be um, <coughs> checking out another section of the firebrick forest along that bike trail and uh, bringing out some more tree planting. Um, so the, you know, we have a mix right now of aspens, blue beech, ironwood, and elms um, of the current order. So that'll be in the future. I'm pretty excited to be having uh, those trees in the gravel bed right now. Um, so moving on to the, my third part here, the EAB plan. Um, just a brief summary of the work session that we had take place on April 19th. Um, so uh, it lasted only about an hour long, but I think we were in pretty uh, deep discussion most of the time. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure that we, you know, it'll be the first of many opportunities to discuss things. And I think we only kind of scratched the surface on things. 
So the, uh, a lot of questions came up. Um, they were kind of focused on specific actions that the city would uh, take toward you know different scenarios, um, yeah, but that it's it's kind of hard to know ahead of time. So things like disposal, um, uh, boulevard trees, you know, how are those going to be managed? Um, and then also uh, the replacement trees. Um, and so, um, so some of these things, you know, she's just not really going to be sure of ahead of time where, where the bug is going to pop up. Um, but I think we all kind of agreed that the plan as it's written um, is a good start. It has a good foundation, and so it gives people a lot of information uh, to make decisions later on. Um, and so with that, um, I made a few edits since the last mission, since the last tree commission meeting. Um, some changes have been made uh, with suggestions from uh, de city department staff that have reviewed the document. So um, things like uh, specific wordings, phrasings, some spelling corrections, and other topics to focus on. Um, so some of the additions that I've made are including um, uh, a couple early warning signs for EAB, uh, more a more specific timeline on insecticide use, you know, then is a proper time to be using these things. And uh, so that they'll have an effect for um, suppressing AB and trying to, you know, um, limit, uh, at least um, slow down its spread. Um, and then also uh, kind of a little bit of a disclaimer on proper insecticide use, just making sure that people are properly using them and uh, that the city might um, consider what kind of insecticide would be used on boulevard trees um, if insecticide are to be used. Um, and then also, you know, decision makers should consider how, um, you know, EAB finding or an infestation somewhere else in the county would affect the city's ability to manage the past here. Um, and so that might be really um, important with disposal. You know, if we have one s disposal site in the city, if there are like surrounding cities um, in other towns, you know, where are they going to drop off their, their ash wood if they're disposing things? If it's going to be here in Rome, you know, um, what's that, how is that going to affect, you know, the city being able to put things there? So. Uh, the city, sh you know, decision makers should be considering, you know, other things like that. And so I guess um, to summarize the EAB plan, the main message is that action is better than inaction, um, that the city should do what can be done to mitigate the impact of the pest, um, to mitigate the impact of the ash loss, and to stretch those costs over time to make it more manageable. Um, but also to preserve quality ash trees in order to retain you know, the benefits that we get from those trees for as long as possible. Because, um, you know, if what you want is to have a 50-year-old ash tree, the best <coughs> way to have that is to preserve one, you know, instead of trying to grow one for 50 years. Um, so it's definitely, you know, it's a good idea to try to save them if you can. Um, and so, uh, from here, um, I think my suggestion to the commission would to consider uh, forwarding this plan to the city council for further consideration. Um, so, any that's what I have for you for for that, and um, I think that covers my portion of the agenda. Um, any questions or comments from the group? Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, Shane, had you had any discussion with the representatives from Brown County with regard to your plan and possibly their policy or upcoming plan? Because I, I, I don't know that the city wants to manage the entire county. It seems to me that's more of a county process. But have you had any discussions with them? I haven't okay. discussed anything with the county. Um, my thought is in New Orleans, kind of a 
administrative center for things. Yeah, I guess Some to me it flows from the state to the county to the city, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I just that's the way I see it going. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Very good. Thank you, Shane. Okay, item F under old business, Arbor Day, April twenty seventh. Yes. Excuse me, uh, chair and yes. members and advisors. Uh, before we leave the green core section E of the agenda, I want to chime in on E four, okay. item four under E, which is the fact that uh, you all know I forwarded on an email from the state of Minnesota a Pollution Control Agency Green Core headquarters that our application for host site um, during the 2018-2019 service year um, was not awarded to the City of New Ulm. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that that's publicly yep. mentioned here at our Thank meeting you. and uh, find out if there's any comments or thoughts or questions about that. Any comments or questions from the group regarding the application? Thank you very much, Mr. Schmitz. So uh, moving on. Arbor Day, April 27th, German Park, Swamp, White Oak was the species, second graders from uh, Jefferson Elementary School. Mr. O'Marrison and Mr. Schmitz, any comments on that? I would defer to uh, Mr. O'Marrison to discuss that. He was on site and very helpful for the annual Arbor Day program in German Park. <coughs> yeah, I, I thought there was a really great turnout, great weather for that, um, 150 uh, second graders from uh, Jefferson Elementary. Um, yeah, it was just a great day for to get that tree planted. Um, the tree's looking good. It's planted, watered, mulched, staked. And um, yeah, it'd be good to see that thing grow. Very good, thank you. Anything else in Arbor Day? Okay, utility bill stuff for mailing flyers, Mr. Nelson. Well, there's not much uh, but that was on there for uh, the last flyer. So I think it's just on here just to remind the commission, I believe August, if I'm mistaken, let me know. Okay. August is the next utility bill stuffer. So maybe start to think of some ideas for the next, your next ch chance at a stuffer in the bill. Okay, very good, thank you. Will we have time to talk about that because we, we have a July meeting and then it needs to be ready for August. So if we don't talk about it till July, is that enough time? Yeah, the turnaround once a design plan is set into place, generally maybe a week at the most is to get, you know, from our the newsletters that come out <coughs> four times a year and other uh, utility bill stuffers, the turnaround once the whole graphics and everything is set up. The printing time is maybe a week. So. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, the big tree contest 2018. Willow, uh, the subcommittee is needed to take care of that. Mr. Schmitz, some comments? Uh, my comments there would be that we have received a few uh, entrants to this year's contest. Uh, they're continuing to be collected uh, at our Park and Recreation Office, and I think it might be in order for you to establish a subcommittee of at least two um, commissioners willing to go out and measure the trees and look at the specimens uh, upon completion of the deadline for submittals. Okay. Who was on it last year? No. I was. I was on it. I can uh, volunteer to do that again. Okay. Who uh, worked with you? I can work with Ardalan. Okay. 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 So we have two volunteers. We have a subcommittee to take care of the uh, 20, 2018 Big Tree Contest. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, home Show 2018 Recap and Thoughts for the 2019 Show. I, I can make my comments on that. There are... I'm a really blunt person, but, you know, there are five peoples on on the board here on the commission and two of us work the home and health show along with Mr. Gartner who put in a lot of hours and uh, you know if we're going to vote unanimously to have a representation or representation at the home and health show then uh, 
we should walk the talk as well as vote for it. So I, if we're going to do this again next year, I would suggest that uh, all five of us participate in the show. It's a, it's a good thing that met lots of people, talked to people about tree planting. Uh, lots of people were interested in garlic mustard. Uh, many people thought that uh, Joe was given free samples. <laughs> but, uh, but there was a lot of interest in invasive species and uh, a lot of interest in tree planting, a lot of questions about emerald ash borer. Question from the floor. Yes. An audience matter. Um, it was kind of enjoyable being there, but as a teacher, I thought our educational presentation could have been a little bit more stimulating. <laughs> because, you know, we had stuff there. Um, I, I thought it was kind of cramped for space a little bit. It might have been more efficient for you to give a half an hour presentation than it would have been to say the same but thing I'm, I'm thinking of, over you know, and over little, again several hundred gimmick, times. Some little gimmick, especially for the kids, you know, we didn't really interest kids in here. So. That was my thought after being there. Years. No, I agree with you. Uh, uh, Tom on the uh, attendance here. I, I had to miss this year, but that's a good uh, situation for us. I think we should pursue it next year, definitely. But, the, you know, to address this educational thing, I've, I've been there too, you just repeat the same thing over mm -hmm. and over and over again. So wh what, what do you recommend? Uh, me? Maybe a, some sort of seminar or something like that? Or? Well, I'm not volunteering to put on okay. a presentation. Okay. I would say that for Joe, it might have been more efficient for him to right. give right. a, a presentation topics. to an audience instead of Having the I feel just remember that for the Felmer County Fair, when I was about 20, some I made an electric. Come up to the board. mic so people can hear him. Oh yes. Um, for different educational stuff for kids, you know, I've had little games or things they can toss and they get a prize, and uh, I had an electronic board where they'd push a button and it would identify, you know, try to identify something, and. I don't know. I mean, it's nice to talk. Giving a presentation, I think last year I did that, and I'm not sure anybody was there for it, rather than sitting in the chairs, <laughs> resting. So I, I, I don't know about programs. They, but Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Follow well, up on I, the home I, show. I do th think it's a valuable, it's valuable time, valuable information that's shared. A lot of people come and approach us and ask about trees, buckthorn. Um, Ellen couldn't be there this year, um, so that was a little bit different. But sure, we can always try to have different materials, better materials, um, and and more participation would all be a great idea. Yep, I agree. Okay, any other comments on the home show or the future? Okay, let's move on. Yes? Well, maybe one comment yet. Um, in the past, I think, some years, we've partnered between the Tree Commission and the Park and Recreation Department. And I, uh, my understanding is we did not do that no. this year because of the fact that the Tree Commission and our invasive species volunteer experts, um, you know, I, that filled the booth and was plenty of uh, uh, material and, and topics. So, I, I, you know, it's just something for you to think about and recognize and, um, you know, it might be appropriate for the Tree Commission to continue on their own, so to speak, in the future. Um, but it's just something for you to keep in mind. Thank you. Okay, item number five, new business. Is there any new business that we need to address? The well, a Chair and members, uh, I would like to make sure that we uh, possibly discuss in a little more detail the EAB plan. Um, I don't know, did we actually take action to recommend this to uh, the City Council? Uh, is that something you want to take action on recommending that at this meeting, or do you want to do that at a future meeting? What are the thoughts of the group? Well, I, I was there when we had the meeting on April 19th, so I feel like I was part of that discussion and have a fairly good understanding of it, but I'm not sure about the rest of you. 
you know, if you're familiar enough and some of you are experts as far, you know, you know, I, I, I thought the plan looked pretty good. Like Shane said, I mean, there's only certain amount of detail we can get into at this point. Um, but I'm not sure, I, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not sure what it means if we put it in the city council approves it. Does that mean then that this is what we're going to do? Or is this, you know, I, I don't quite understand that, I guess. Well, I think the city would view it as a guideline, um, as a roadmap, so to speak. Certainly these plans and documents are, uh, can be dynamic and often are dynamic and things change. But it certainly uh, is something for the commission to consider uh, at some point recommending it for adoption by the council. Um, but I, I think it's something that the members should I, uh, I would discuss. make that motion that we recommend that the city council will adopt the Emerald Ash Borer Plant Management Plan as it's written. So restate that. What we're doing is we're recommending that. I'm, the, I'm the making the motion so we can chew on this for a while okay. so we can right. discuss it as well. But okay. my motion would be that we recommend to the city council that they adopt the Emerald Ash Borer Management Plan that we have in front of us. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very Aye. good. Motion passed. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, we can discuss it. Well, okay. <laughs> discussion. The, the time for discussion is before we vote, <laughs> vote to adopt. So we're. <laughs> I thought it was a slam dunk. <laughs> I'm good with it. Okay. And then, then the, that begs the bigger question. I'll just throw this out for discussion. We have, you know, we're facing. Mm -hmm. Emerald ash borer coming to town. It's close it's in Scott County. It's in Fairmont. And that's mm -hmm. 50 miles on either side of us. And uh, given the way the disease or the bug manifests itself, you it could be here. We don't know it yet because it takes a while for the symptoms to show up. So given Emerald ash borer, the fact that we have a bunch of different entities in the city as part of the forestry program, urban forestry program in the city. We're going to be losing our green core worker. Shane's done a terrific job in the years that he's been with us. And it begs the question again in my mind is that we need to have some person in the city government that's sort of the rep repository and the person who manages the city's urban forestry program. So I don't know that we need to make a motion to discuss this or we want to make it a future agenda item, but um, uh, we face some pretty big issues in invasive species management, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we also seem, my personal opinion, that the Tree Commission is sort of uh, suffering from mission creep, you know, we, we keep gaining more and more things, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not sure really what the direction of the commission is why are we here what are we supposed to do we we make recommendations to the the city council but we also seem to be like the board that manages the urban forestry program i served on the park and rec commission for some time and 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 we do things that the park and rec commission would just be kind of recommending to park and rec mm -hmm. that they do instead of actually doing the tasks we're the only city commission outside of the PUC, which is sort of um, has staff to do this that has booths at things like the Home and Health. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we, we need to have a discussion about that. And perhaps if you want to call it a, either a, a consultant that serves as the urban forester for the city or a city staff person who does this as their job or part of another job. My, my piece. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Very good. I never thought of it quite that way. But any comment from other members? I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, everything you say, I, I've seen that. I, we get a little lost in the tree commission. Mm -hmm. And maybe we need to put that on for new business for the next time as far as some discussion about who, who does what we want them to do, yeah. you know. 
Maybe this should be an agenda item on the July meeting. We have some time to prepare for it. This very topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, I agree. I mean, Shane's going to be gone. And then how do we enact anything that we want mm -hmm. done? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> um, Commission, thank you. Mark Schnobrick, a consulting forester who has been working with Shane over the last couple of years in conjunction with what he's been doing. And your question comes up at a proper time. And you as a commission, where do you go from here type of thing? You're doing exactly what you should have been doing. You, it, was, it was your goal a number of years ago. I think the commission was a little different at that time. But Tom Schmitz was here. And I think Steve Kaler was, of course, was still part of it. And that was you were looking to try to get a tree inventory going. And you were trying to get somebody to initiate some of these things, and it was hard to do because departments were busy in what they were doing, and you really didn't have anybody uh, geared for that. And the Green Corps program came up, and you, as a commission, decided maybe we should try for that. And you've seen the, I guess I would say, marvelous results. Mm -hmm. You now have almost a complete inventory done now. Mm -hmm. uh, I see great goals have been met, met with this. You. Um, uh, you've been crucial in making decisions all the way through Shane's um, tenure here, and you've seen how, how community forestry is really part of the entire community. Uh, with that, with uh, not having a chance to speak with uh, Mr. Schmitz with the Park and Rec Department, though, I know there was a notice of, of another grant opportunity coming, making itself av available. Uh, Mr. Schmitz, I don't know if you want me to bring that up or if you want Certainly, to. Certainly, yes. Oh, okay. It's uh, recently come out of, uh, is it the Department of Agriculture? Correct. Right. Please was. discuss that. Um, coming up, and you're already taking steps in ahead of the ball game. It is a grant try, uh, available to communities, municipalities, for managing emerald ash borer um, preparedness. And... I may just go through some of the things that are eligible with this grant. It is through the Minnesota Department of, of uh, actually with the uh, uh, Department of Natural Resources, so it is with the DNR. And it, uh, let me go through some of the things that are eligible with this grant. Grant funds can be used for the purchase of chemicals for, no, uh, for in injection treatment programs. It can be used for purchase of equipment Less than $5,000 that can be used to complete the project. I'll maybe at a later time we'll give you some examples of how you may consider using these. Purchase uh, equipment rental, purchase of trees for diversity, uh, site preparation and planting costs, including mulch, water bags, staking materials, tree map, et cetera, uh, guards, et cetera and uh, materials to use to educate and conduct uh, outreach to citizens. Now, you've been fortunate enough here so far to have Shane the last two years doing some of that. You obviously have been present at your annual spring meetings with PUC and, and engineering, but um, here's an opportunity to expand on that to the next level now. Now I'll go up to the next level of community forestry. Um, let me give you some examples of how you might might utilize this. You know, they're asking for for tree planting, for example, to increase the diversity of your of your of your uh, current tree population. Shane's results thus far have come up with some of these following um, indications: ash comprised 29% of the tree population in in New Ulm. Um, 30 trees right now that have been inventoried on the boulevard have a condition rating less than two. And let me define that. Four was like 100% a tree was in perfect condition. One would be practically dead almost, that, just up from that. And two, so maybe not quite that bad, but um, lower on the condition scale. Um, park trees, 44 trees have been found. And these are just... Uh, uh, these are just ash trees now, just ash. Not, that's the only species I'm speaking of. 44 trees in the parks system have been found to be less than a condition two. These dollars can be used to take these trees down and have the grant pay for that. 
this is going to boost or, or excel your program even to the next level. You'll be able now to take care of some of these trees that, you know, you talked about. We talked about having emerald ash borer management includes managing your ash trees. And part of that was to remove, I think we discussed that at earlier, or you did at earlier commission meetings, of removing those bad ash that are out there now and possibly replacing those. This grant would allow you to pay for the removal of those trees. And Shane and I did a little figuring this morning here. And that he did, remember you had a research done a while back as to contractors, tree removal contractors who have submitted some costs of what it would cost to remove trees. Mm -hmm. And Shane came up with a estimated, of course, estimated of $21.08 a diameter inch to remove and grind out a stump and haul it away. Well, if you had 74 trees to remove, if you got, if you took all the poor conditioned ash trees in the boulevards and in the parks, it would cost about $11,000 or $12,000 to do that. Um, they may fluctuate. We don't quite know where they'll go, but it gives you some kind of an idea. The grant could help pay for that. If you were to go back and just in the parks, just in the parks, maybe not even on the boulevards, but just in the parks and replace 44 trees, that's going to be close to $10,000. The grant could pay for that. Um, I guess I'm here, and Shane and I spoke earlier, the, the conditions, everything moves fast. It, and they have a pre-application process whereby it's no more than three questions on this pre-application. It's not a, an extensive application at all, but it sets up a, a standard for them to then sort through those and then approve those for a further um, uh, data that you would send in for the application, further, further things that you would put in the application to finalize the application. So I guess I'm here recommending, and that has to be done by, by June 15th. So that doesn't, it isn't done until you're uh, prior to your, it has to be done prior to your next commission meeting. So I guess I'm here recommending that you maybe think about taking that next step. The maximum grant amount can be up to $30,000. And I listed the items that it can be used for. Another thing that might be useful, it, it listed equipment and equipment can include, I know engineering, I know parks, I know some of those others have talked about. Uh, Shane started the, the tree inventory program by, by doing a lot of it by paper and by hand and going out with his volunteers. Here might be an opportunity to purchase some PDAs or those personal data applicators, is that what they're called, I think is, is the term. Maybe there could be addition for that for, for the parks department. You know, Inventory, once you make an inventory, you want to kind of try to keep it up. Here's an opportunity to have a grant purchase some of this equipment for you to, to allow your staff um, to maintain that tree inventory. As soon as you have a tree inventory, it's old, right? It's already old. We don't know what the tree is that we'd inventoried last fall in this uh, uh, spring and so on, so it's already old. So to keep that up, you need some equipment to do that. This grant would allow you some of those opportunities to do that. So. Again, I guess I'm here recommending that you maybe think about at least pre-applying for this. Um, if you're not accepted, well, that goes that way. If you are accepted at that time, you can look at in depth then as to uh, what extent you want to, to apply further on the grant application process and see, but at least you got your, your foot in the door and it might be another opportunity to take the community forestry program here in New Ulm up to the, to the next level. So. Who would actually fill out this application for this? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Well, you'd have to decide that. Uh, Mr. Schmitz has kind of been the one leading the pack here with the Green Corps applications in the past. I, th I guess he would be one, or if Mr. Kaler would like to look at it and, and have his input on there too, or. Uh, it's a pre-application, you're accepted, and then you do the full application, or? Right, I think it's right. something new that I've seen. Oftentimes they used to have you fill out extensive, you know, five pages sure. as to what you're doing, list all the species you're going to be planting. They've done it now where they're just, you give a general assumption of what you want to accomplish, how it's going to help your EAB management. That's the primary purpose of this grant is EAB management. And uh, what you feel your outcome is going to be. There's like three questions. And right. it they, was part of our packet. If you look, it's, it's in there. And well, I went is. to the website. It's got that initial application there and so if you make the first round of cuts then you're notified and then you can go Correct, forth yeah. and, and fill out the bigger application and 
you know, I think we should probably do that. I, I don't know what we have to lose by, I mean, right. we only lose if we don't even try. So um, do you think the fact that we don't have identified emerald ash borer yet in our community hurts our chances at all? No. I mean, they talk about it being a preparedness plan, so. so that, well, I noticed yeah. that was one of the criteria. Did you look at that? that you yeah, either had I read an e it. Mm -hmm. EAB plan right. on paper or working on an EAB yep. management plan in your community? Yeah. Or have your council have already approved that? So you meet that criteria now just with your actions here, mm -hmm. here tonight. So. Yeah. Quick question. You said there's a number of ash trees that are deteriorated. What, what happened to them? Are they just old or got mm -hmm. beat up or? Okay. All of the above. Okay, okay. Trees age, right? On the boulevard, I mean, that's hard living out there, I, I guess. I <laughs> oh, yeah. I think okay. you um, you probably cut a tree's life by a, really? oh, a okay. third or more, okay. but just being With in a urban all the traffic and snow. Pollution and, and, and other yeah. factors. Pollution, right. Sidewalks, okay. curbs. Okay, very good, very good. Salt. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. A uh, question for Mr. Schmitz and Mr. Kaler. Um, before we, we get involved in a grant proposal, do we have to recommend to the city that they allow us to make application to the grant? Yes. Okay. The city council has to authorize application yeah. for a grant. Okay. So do we, we should, if we're going to pursue this, we should probably have a motion on record that we seek approval from the city council to participate in this grant program. Or that yes, the city, if you, if city participate at the mm -hmm. whoever is most appropriate to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would make a motion that we uh, recommend to the city council that that the city apply for this grant, and that the city council can determine who would be the lead agency in the city to do that with our support. Do we have a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? I'll add a little discussion. Um, you know that this application process is uh, managed by the Department of Natural Resources. I think it's originally funded by the federal government. Um, and it's you a, a grant awards can be up to $30,000. There's no minimum dollar. So zero, you know, one to $30,000 is, is what we could ask for. Um, and there are no matching uh, cash or in-kind requirements for this grant it appears um, and yes that the uh, pre-application is due um, June 15th and so uh, you know what there's time to get authorization from the council I'm sure there will need to be some staff review uh, and of course maybe even a subcommittee of the Commission to assist with that um, but it certainly appears possible um, as, you know, quickly gr glancing through this information that we've received just recently. Can we get this on the agenda at the next council meeting? Um, it, well, we've got opportunities uh, bef between now and, and uh, June 15. There's a few council meetings between now and June 15th. Do they mean monthly or biweekly or what? The first and third Tuesday of every okay, month. Okay, very good, very good, biweekly, okay. Twice a month, whatever. So probably the sooner the better though. So if, if they approve that, we have more time to work on the application. Um, I think that uh, it might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's either, uh, I'd be willing to work on the application. I would hope that Mr. Schnoberg would be as well. So. Excellent. Okay, shall we address the motion? Uh, do we need to restate everyone understands the motion? Or Lisa, you had to come in? No, I do. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay. Uh, anything else to be brought forward at this meeting for under new business? The only other question on the agenda that I see is, uh, you know, whether or not you want to um, alter the scheduled date of the July meeting, the next meeting, which is July 5th, the first Thursday of um, that month. Fourth of July this year is a Wednesday. I, I, I know I won't make it if it's July 5th. Yeah, so, so that's the question. Mm -hmm. uh, will we have a quorum on July 5th? 
I'll be around, but I mean, uh, would a, there's would one. Be here? I would be around. Okay. All right. There's three. Scott will be here. Three yeses. <laughs> okay. I would rather the then we get in July and my yeah. my schedule's crazy, so uh, that week is pretty calm. Uh, I'm just speaking for me. I'll be gone the next week. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, I probably will. Be too. All right. Then we'll leave it on um, Thursday, July 5th, as our next meeting. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Um, Okay, so we determined the attendance. Very good. Uh, do we need a motion to adjourn or just? I move we adjourn. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? <laughs> no, sorry. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>